past sins by building a bath complex. For centuries, baths had been an integral part of daily life in Rome. They centered around an arrangement of hot and cold pools. But the baths were more than just a place to bathe. They were country clubs open to people of every class. After you finish work, you're going to go to the baths for a couple of hours to unwind, to listen to politics, to, to get a rub down, to have a manicure, to have a haircut. There were places to work out. You could wrestle. And then, of course, you could go to the baths themselves and go to the hot rooms, sweat a lot. And you were surrounded by magnificent structures that were sheathed in marble and decorated with statues. And they were for the benefit of the average person. This was not just a structure for the rich. This was for the average Roman citizen. Baths had always been a popular construction project among Roman emperors. Previous rulers like Nero, Titus, and Trajan had each built extravagant baths in their own name. And Caracalla was determined to trump them all with the most massive bath complex ever built. The imposing shell that remains today is a testament to his success. As you can see from what remains all around us, there was a series of giant rooms in which there were swimming pools the size of Olympic pools. There were bathing pools at different temperatures, private bathing rooms, and areas where people could mix and mingle. The central building was larger than St. Peter's Basilica and trimmed from stem to stern in gold and marble. Its floors were covered with intricate mosaics, fragments of which still remain. Surrounding the main building were open spaces for track and field events, separate buildings containing libraries, shops, restaurants, and even brothels lined the perimeter. The complex could comfortably accommodate nearly 2,000 Romans at a time. This small town would have been heaving with people.